Hey everybody, welcome to the Cryptopolitan. I'm your host, Satoshi Sean. Thanks for stopping by. If it's your first time here, please hit the uh, subscribe button and the bell for notifications. We try to get out a news video to you every day and a weekend report as well, which is what today is. Um, no matter what, if you're a new subscriber, old subscriber, just stopping by. Please crush the like button. really helps us out with uh, YouTube's algorithm. And if you leave a comment, appreciate it, and I'll uh, definitely interact with you. Really enjoy it. Well, let's head over to the Cryptopolitan, your one-stop shop for all news when it comes to cryptocurrency and blockchain technology. A few things to go over today I thought were interesting. This is a really huge thing. I don't know how I feel about it or what I think, but the Bank of England governor proposes replacement of the U.S. dollar. These are bold statements. This is really big. Um... I don't know if it's just part of a some kind of conspiracy plan, um, but it's 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 a pretty huge deal. So the Bank of England Governor Mark Carney um, has indicated a revolutionary overhaul of the existing financial system by proposing Facebook's Libra-like digital currency to replace the U.S. dollar dominance. Now this is a big move by England. Um, by the United Kingdom, if it's real, um, if they're not just uh, working with the United States on some kind of nefarious plan, I don't know. Um, but they're talking about taking away the hegemony of the U.S. dollar, <laughs> which, if it's true, this this guy will be heart attacked in no time. Um, if the Clintons were in office, he'd probably already have had a heart attack. Um, he's putting forth his opinion at the Federal Reserve's annual gathering at the Jackson Hole. Um, on August 23rd, the economist, banker, and digital currency supporter urged central banks and governments need, that need to pay heed to the digital reserve currencies, such as the Libra, to bring about a radical shift in global monetary system. See, he says the right things. They, they do make sense. He talks about taking away the power from them being able to, you know, really, for the U.S. dollar to affect the world stage when it comes to uh, sanctions and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> it was just two months ago when the Bank of England, BOE, governor advocated widespread adoption of Facebook's global cryptocurrency, Libra, to end trade wars, and the impending crisis of the growth economy. According to him, the U.S. dollar needs replacing, and there's no better way to do it than to introduce a digital alternative, which we already have in abundance Bitcoin, Litecoin, whatever. Um, oh my God, could you imagine if the Bank of England adopted XRP? Oh. Yeah, all the XRP army would just, they just would, they fainted if they were watching that. Um, but an end to the US dollar monopoly is what he wants. These are dangerous words. This is why there's been so many wars in the Middle East. Um, <clears throat> A lot of people think it's about oil. It's about it's about the dollar. Um, any country that ever wanted to go on their gold reserves to back their own currency instead of U.S. dollar, they automatically became a uh, an enemy. Definitely gonna be watching this. These are crazy, crazy things. Um, speaking of crazy things, we've been following the what's been going on in India. And the last story I did, if you go back, the uh, some exchanges went to the Supreme Court against the Reserve Bank of India, or the RBI. And it, it was like a, a an Abbott and Costello comedy bit because, like, the, the judge had no idea what well, what's a cryptocurrency, what are you doing, what is an exchange. No one could explain it. And he's like, "Well, if you're a currency, you, you, the bank would do this." And they're like, "No, because the bank says we're not a currency, so they can't do this, and they're doing this." So it's just back and forth, back and forth. So the reserve, the judge said, the Reserve Bank of India has been given two weeks by the Supreme Court to resolve the concern raised by the cryptocurrency exchanges in the country. Big deal, finally trying to, to contain some of this craziness over in India. Um, in response to their petition, Justice Rohinton Narayman on Wednesday ordered the banking regulator to address the concerns appropriately during the next hearing slated for September 25th. The court has also requested that the regulator furnish arguments with the appropriate documentation because there was no documentation. They're just like, literally, it, it, they were just saying things back and forth. 
um, and, and, and none of it made any sense. It's like, well, why don't you do this? Because we're because they won't say that we're this. Because this, well, why don't we do this? No, one won't do that because they like this. Um, so hopefully this is going to give some clear uh, framework, which will help, you know, the space in general. Um, some stuff that's going on in the United States. Uh, President Trump has hinted at capital gains reforms, um, which is needed. And how that affect Bitcoin, it really won't, kind of. Um, so Trump wanted to uh, to change the way that capital gains are calculated. Now, capital gains are gains or profit that you make from investments, whether it's like real estate, stocks, whatever. Um, but it's more long-term stuff. So the John Madison of Dayspring Financial Ministry explained how it's going to work. So let's assume that you buy a Bitcoin for $10,000 and then you sell it five years later for $15,000. So the profit is $5,000. The way it has worked before, it's like no one really even knew whether it was a total taxable event for all of it or just the profit. But anyway, it would be considered a long-term capital gain under current regulations. However, through the indexing of the capital gains, it would be considered $4,000. So you don't have to pay the tax on the $4,000, not the five. Which is cool, however, anyone who's in cryptocurrency, they don't hold their Bitcoin for five years. Um, you know, that would be like a, I don't even know how much it was a couple, five years ago. It's probably a couple hundred bucks um, or a hundred bucks. But however, this holds little value for Bitcoin investors who gain large sums in a short period uh, as the inflation rate is very low. They would, But this is the one thing. Changing this, it, it kind of... It makes things a little bit more attractive for people to hodl and to just buy it and put it away and use Bitcoin as digital gold or a long-term investment to not worry about the fluctuations, to buy it at 10 and cash it in at 15 a year, two years, five years, whatever. No, not a year, not two years. You've got to start, see, I, even I'm not thinking like a normal uh, legacy investment vehicle, like five years, 10 years, and then sell it and just pay taxes on the capital gains that you made. Um, so it is what it is. Um, it, it, it may, you know, um, but that also, I, th I think one of the reasons that this is going to come out is to court, uh, not court, but I think it's what the institutional investment um, firms want. They want to be able to sell Bitcoin investment as a long-term investment so that people aren't freaked out over the daily thing and the weekly thing um, <clears throat> and are able to push it as a capital gains. It, it, so it's more normal for the normals, if that makes more sense. And last, it's kind of cool, the Rwandan Central Bank is going to introduce a digital currency. I think this is huge news. Um, number one, because it's Rwanda, and number two, because it's a cryptocurrency. So the Rwanda Central Bank is studying ways to boost its, the economic growth further by introducing its own digital currency. Now, Africa completely screwed up when it comes to, to finances uh, and it comes to their economies. Most of the countries have, you know, rampant inflation, not as bad as Venezuela, but, oh, but you know, really bad. Um, you know, worse in the world. Um, one of the worst in the world. <clears throat> but... Rwanda is one of the smallest yet fastest growing economies in the African Union, and they've enjoyed a substantial economic growth. So they are doing it right. They are winning in their in their uh, their market and their in their financial system. So it's been to further development and drastically improve the living standards for its population. The Rwandan Central Bank is planning to enhance transaction efficiency and nurture economic uh, development through the means of digital digital currency. I think if if you're doing things right in an area where everyone is struggling, I'm talking about different countries. I think they're they're already leading the pack in Africa by being a success. Um, I think if they do adopt digital cryptocurrency and it takes off, that will be the like the spark or the 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 flame that lights the fire. Um, I think every other country and just the people in it, but like, let's just do uh, what Rwanda has done. They have success. Let's just follow the lead. Um, 
and Rwanda is really want to follow in the footsteps of Canada, the Netherlands, Singapore, who successfully tested blockchain applications in banking and fintech industry. I think it's really big news. I think it's a very big step forward um, when it comes to implementation and adoption. So, good news. That's about it for today, I, or for, for this weekend. I am Satoshi Sean. It was good hanging out with you guys. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.